Ryan Kempster is from the University of Western Australia here, right here. Ryan researches at the Oceans Institute and at the School of Animal Biology here at UWA. His supervisors are Professor Sean Collin and Dr. Nathan Hart. The thesis title, his thesis title, is the role of electroreception in the feeding behavior of uh, elasma branches. His 3MT talk title for us, Survival of the Stillest, Predator Avoidance Strategies of Shark Embryos. Would you please make Ryan very welcome. During the nine months of development before birth, we are lucky that we have our mothers there to protect us until we are strong enough to emerge. Unfortunately, many animals, like sharks, aren't quite so lucky. Approximately one third of all known species of sharks will develop completely independently of their mothers inside an egg case like this. In fact, a shark would actually eat her own offspring at birth if it wasn't for a hormone release to suppress her appetite. Now developing sharks will have to survive many months to even years inside these eggs attached to a small piece of seaweed. So how do they survive if they are unable to leave the egg to find food? Well, they actually have all the food they need inside the egg case with them as they are nourished by a protein rich yolk sac that will provide them with all the energy they need to fully develop. But how can they avoid being eaten by predators if they are unable to leave the egg? Well, to understand this, we need to learn a little about the senses of sharks. Now sharks are very unique because they actually have two more senses than you and I do. And one of these being a vibration sense that allows them to detect the movements of fish swimming around them. And the other, an electro sense that allows them to detect the tiny bioelectric fields produced by these moving fish. They do this using tiny electrosensitive pores found all over the surface of their head. So as the fish swim past the shark, the electric signal received at each of these pores will vary. And it's this variation that allows the shark to determine the exact location of that fish. Now sharks can use this ability not only to detect prey, but also predators. So I thought I would put them to the test and see if a developing shark at such an early stage in life could use its electrosensory system to detect the presence of a predator. I found that when I stimulated them with very weak electric fields that mimic those of larger predatory fish, the embryos would respond by stopping their breathing and staying completely still, which would in turn make it increasingly difficult for the predator to locate them. Now, after seeing this same response on many occasions, I found that the embryos would actually respond for different lengths of time according to the strength of the electric field they experienced. So some signals would effectively pose more of a threat and cause the embryo to stop breathing for a longer period of time. Now, you may ask yourself, why is this important? Well, here we have a perfect model of how a controlled shark reacts to very specific electric fields. By taking what we have learned here and applying this to larger adult sharks, we can start to understand how sharks will respond to electric repellent devices like those worn by scuba divers and surfers. That way, in the future, we can develop better, more effective devices to keep us safe in the water and hopefully, in the process, help to protect our next generation of sharks. Thank you. <laughs>